I love it when I see young women moving to Ghana and being fearless about it and starting their own journey in this country because it's not easy for a diaspora to move back home to Ghana but when I see a young woman who has got such a big job in New York and decided to come to Ghana during the year of return by accident actually she ended up staying and so i want to hear about her journey why she decided to go into real estate why she was building and what the challenges that she has faced and what the good things that she would say has helped her to grow helped her in her business and helped her to share her story with you today and so i'm joined by the ceo of Inspired Realty, Jennifer Apia. Sis, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you for coming on because we need to hear these stories. These stories are very important. So I want to take you back to the US, to New York, okay. Manhattan, yeah. Queens, <laughs> all of that. Share with us your journey in the US, what you were doing before you decided to move back to Ghana. Thank you so much. Um, well, first and foremost, I'm so grateful to be here. Thank okay. you for giving me the opportunity. Um, so I lived in New York for a long time, um, straight out of college. I actually grew up in upstate Albany, New York, but I ended up moving to New York City, which is just a little two hour drive away. Um, and started out doing the whole New York hustle, just mm -hmm. uh, trying to make it. And then I ended up uh, getting a great opportunity to work for a company, a uh, hedge fund, and I was able to sell real estate for them. Okay. Um, so for the past seven years, I was working in that department selling real estate for this hedge fund. And it was absolutely incredible, completely changed my whole life. And I was able to finally move out of Queens into the big city of Manhattan. I was living right in Midtown. The most expensive city. It like. was ridiculous. It's not unheard of to pay upwards of $5,000 a month for wow. rent. And for one I'm, bedroom? For one bedroom. And, you know, you live that life. And I, I, I was living the whole dream, the, the American dream, living in New York. I had everything i could think of a beautiful apartment beautiful view of the city it was every girl's dream you know you can walk into any store get whatever you want but then 2019 it was just something that was like calling me to you know i was born in ghana um okay and but we left when i was just a baby you know um in suta mampong come oh, to find out yeah we left okay. when i was just a six month old baby so i never New Ghana, I didn't grow up okay. here and I didn't really know and we didn't come back and forth to visit or anything. So uh, I came... So 2019 was your first time coming back? It was February of that year. No, actually 2014, I came for a short trip for okay. four days okay. to visit a friend. And then that was my first time coming back. And then... Um, How was that? That was very interesting. It was so quick and it was... Um, you know, she had a beautiful home in uh, Trasaco, beautiful place. It was it was so nice, but I was really in transit. I was going to Egypt and I was doing a trip to Rome. So okay. I was like, I'm already moving around. Let me do a little couple days in Ghana. I haven't been here since I, I was born, I yeah. guess. And it was nice. It was uh, it was very different, actually, because when I actually came, I came for another trip in 2019 okay. uh, in February and stayed for about a month. And um I remember like there were more roads, like the airport was completely different. Yeah. It was just, it was so nice. And I was like, wow, Ghana has really changed in just a few years. And so um, that was the first time I had a chance to start thinking about the building process. And I was like, you know what? I'm spending a lot of money on rent in New York. Had I saved this money, I could have built a really nice uh, house here in Ghana. So let me at least try to have a vacation home okay. so I wanted to start the process of building and we did we started I started uh, building um, I, I don't know if that was the best way to go about things you know I it was a good what friend. happened oh it was a friend of mine uh, that I've known for several years that um, had a construction company and they said they would be in charge of building and all I had to do was provide the funds and they would take care of it and along the way they were sending me pictures and videos so I'm in New York thinking oh my gosh I'm building a house and then I get here October 2019 and the process was not really that far along and um it was just a lot of <laughs> so was the pictures real with the pictures? it was real it was real okay. it was real um but there was an issue in the land documents that I wasn't aware of before. So that's when I found out the whole process of buying land and litigation and 
not knowing that in Ghana, a piece of land can be sold off to five different people. And you, you know, it's very difficult to make those changes unless you want to be in court for a long time. Mm -hmm. And they were not willing to make those changes. So um, I had to pull out of that house and then start another project, which seemed like a great idea. You know, uh, a friend, family friend, oh, I don't know how, um, they, they said they had a beautiful place somewhere else, you know, you can finish that place. And it was just not the best idea because wow. it was a lot of money that was put into that. And uh, the headache that came out of that was just unreal. So I realized, you know what, I had so many friends back home in New York that were like, hey, you know, we want to go back home. You know, it was during the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Right. It was a lot of injustice in America and people were sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And they're like, we want to go back. Let's go back to Africa. You know, why not? It's not what they show on TV yeah. in America. Because when I got here, I was like, this is good. They're living better than we are. Like, this is great. And, I, and they're like, we want to go back home too. You know, why not? What are we doing here in America? So they would, I would get so many questions and I I, I didn't really know how to answer it because my experience was very challenging. So it was very difficult and I was like, you guys, just slow your roll. You don't know the process of building. Uh, you know, I know every, everybody's excited about building, but um, it's a process and it takes a lot of time. You really have to do your research and know where you want to be. So I was like, you know what, let me start this company because that's what I was doing back in New York. I know real estate. I know um, how the process of, of uh, I guess acquiring different, well, we were selling shares, you know, okay. shares are a little bit different than what they do here. And then I realized that the real estate market here is like night and day, yeah. nothing like in America. Totally different. <laughs> totally different ball game. You are dealing with a whole different situation. Uh, financing options are very different. There's no mortgages like in the U.S. You know, it's very common for people in the U.S. to take out a 30 year mortgage at a very low interest rate. But in Ghana, it's not like that. It's a cash yeah. buy, and in your, your, after your deposit is put down, if the building is already completed, you have about 30 days to come up with the rest of the um, balance, rem yeah. remaining balance. And it, it, was, it was like night and day. I could not believe the amount of people that had access to liquid cash mm -hmm. like that in yes. Africa. You know, they cannot call Africans poor. They cannot, whatever they're thinking in America is not true because they pay cash for everything here. If you see someone with a house, they paid for it cash. If you see someone with a car, they paid for it cash. There's no financing or long monthly payments here. It's a different ball game and it really opened my eyes and I was really happy uh, to see that, but it does make it so much harder to yes. do, to do business and to um, do everything. So it was, it was an interesting world, but I was like, you know what? Where there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. And there's a market that wants to come here. There's a market that wants to invest in Africa. And got every other place is doing it. Everybody's investing into Africa right now. So why not we do it for ourselves? How are you doing? Are you building the properties and selling off? Or do you have other construction and building firms that you sell for? Yes, we work with a bunch of different developers. You know, there are different developers, lots of different companies that either we sell directly for. I do want to go into development for my own, okay. but that does take a lot of upfront capital and there is definitely partnerships that go into that. So uh, it's definitely in the works right now. I can't talk too much about it, okay. but we are definitely doing that. Uh, but again, acquiring the right land and a space to do something like that has been quite a challenge for us. But um, we work with definitely a bunch of de uh, different developers that uh, have access to units, townhouses, properties, land. You know, uh, we also have lawyers we work with to make sure any issues of litigation are yeah. cleared before we move forward and proceed with anything um, because that is the best way to go about buying land or any property really. Mm -hmm. Take me through a typical transaction. Okay. If somebody comes in right now and wants a property, what's the process? Great question. They, um, there's a couple different ways. It depends on what they want. They do fill out a profile for me to get an idea of exactly what they're looking for, the location, where they want to be, what type of unit, if it's an apartment, a townhouse, if they want to build from scratch, if they want to um, do anything like that. Um, but just recently we had a young woman, well she's not young, um, 
very established uh, woman come in and she was looking for a condo okay. and she wanted to be in prime time across. She said, I've had the big houses, I've done everything I want to be in. You know, this is my time to enjoy my life. My children are grown. So uh, we found her a beautiful unit um, in airport. And it just so happened that um, it was already built, already constructed um, at a uh, Bellagio actually okay. and it was just she fell in love with it so you know we talk with the developer they negotiate the prices and uh, typically we take them around I want them to because I think my biggest mistake when I first got to Ghana was rushing to oh, I, I just because I found the land at this price I have to start building but once you're here for a while you kind of get a feel of where you want to be what area you want to live in is it closer, if you have children, closer to their school? Mm. Is it closer to your job? Or are you just building and, and buying a house or something just because it's all that was affordable? But we usually take them around. What feels like home? You know, okay. what areas do you want to be in? Do you love the mountains? Do you agree? What, what part of town do you really want to feel? So we really take them by the hand and okay. walk them through the process of this is what it's going to take. This is a different budget if you move out of this town and um, just let them kind of get a feel of how Ghana works for them. Because okay. people come for so many different reasons. Yeah. And, just be, and, and there are some cases where being right in town is not the best avenue for them. So we kind of feel out what they're looking for. And of course, budget, you know. Mm -hmm. Accra has definitely changed, so it's definitely more expensive, but yeah. they can find something beautiful, which is maybe just about 30 minute drive away. So once the profile is filled out, we then move forward and then get in touch with each developer, what makes the most sense. If it's uh, not yet to be completed, then you have payment uh, terms. If they're going to use financing through the bank, we kind of set all that up for them okay. just so they have something in place and they know what the next steps are moving forward. Okay. And are you just doing stuff in Accra or Kumasi, Volta region? Like, how are you? That's a great question, too. I, hmm. We were trying to branch out into Kumasi and all these other regions, and it's hard because you kind of spread yourself really thin, especially if you're not familiar with those areas. And I had to just keep it based in Accra, in Accra okay. you know, because it, 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 I have to physically be there to inspect. You know, you have to kind of do an appraisal, survey the land, see what's really going on, are yeah. there any issues, and there's a lot of things that go on on the back end that... Um, just may not be the best thing, you know, okay. moving forward. But right now, we focus mainly on Accra. Okay. We do have um, some developers that do bring us properties that are in Kumasi that I know well. And um, if we do have clients that do want those, those are definitely available. For But for the most part, it's just here in Accra. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what type of clientele are you seeing that are coming through the door? Are they all diasporans? Are you getting local people? Are you getting celebrities? Who are the type of people that you're selling to? Oh, you know, we've been fortunate. Um, most of the clients are from the U.S. You know, a lot of the clients are from the U.S. that uh, I was lucky enough to keep relationships with um, clients from back in New York and, you know, different investors and different things like that. And then through just relationship building and uh, friendships, you know, you bump into a couple celebrities and they, you know, introduce you to other people that have access to you know those types of things so it has really opened up the world uh, for me so it's just been God like that has been I've just been grateful to get um, good contacts because I've realized Ghana it's not like in the U.S. where everyone has a credit score, you know, <laughs> where you can pull up someone's credit score, they got an 850 credit score, they, they do what they say they're going to do, they can pay back stuff. In Ghana, it's more about relationships, you know, building relationships can open up doors that all the money in the world can't. So That's it's true. been nice to kind of pair up with people and if they... If they trust you. I just feel like people spend money with people they trust, True. you know, and if you can get someone to trust you, they'll definitely spend money with you if they feel comfortable and um, they're looking for something anyway, rather than getting scammed or falling into any of the issues I fell into when I first came, you know, I know the heartache that brings. So I kind of didn't want anybody to ever have to go through that. So just, um, Building that relationship yeah. with people, it kind of opens up doors. You'll meet. The, we've got celebrity clients now. We've got you know relatives of the celebrities. You know yeah. they, and then it kind of builds up the credibility because they're like, fantastic. okay, this person is a, a good person, and someone who kind of has been there, done that. You don't have to fall into this pothole. I already fell in there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do that. So it's a, um, I guess, just ease 
That's you know, good. peace of mind. A lot of people say that Ghana properties are really expensive, more than properties in the US. Do you agree with that? in terms of the money spending, the type of clientele that you're getting. Now you've seen a lot of people buying, you know, properties that are over a million in Ghana. The typical properties are under a million. Um, unless you bump into an investor that their sole purpose is to just invest and they, they are buying with the purpose to rent out for gain or something like that. It just depends. And, and I find that more of the local Ghanaian clients um, typically do that. Um, but for the U.S., having someone that has access to liquid cash in the hundreds of thousands of dollars is very rare. Um, you do get clients like that, but it's, it's rare in America. Even if you've got a quarter million dollars sitting in your bank account, you could be investigated. Like, why do you have that much money on hand? You know, they mm -hmm. almost think, what are you, laundering? Like, why, why do you? But in Ghana, it's very different. You have to have access to the liquid cash to pay for it in, in full. And sometimes it's... Um, just a two-year mark you know you have to pay a quarter of a million dollars in two years until the project is completed which is very unheard of in the u.s um but the club people do it i mean once they understand that concept of it's cash up front they they will find a way wow. <laughs> to get access to the money but i think um it's it's a much easier sale with the 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 lower price points. Okay. And when I say lower price points, it's not really a low price point. I'm talking about 150000 to 250000 okay. You know, in Accra here, you see townhouses over half a million dollars, you know, $600,000 yeah. that all get sold cash. But I feel like it's a much easier sale in that, that sweet spot where they feel like, okay, we can figure out a way and get that done. Which, to me, I, I still think it's ridiculously expensive. It's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe not in New York, but in other parts of America, you can get a full mansion for a quarter of a million dollars, yeah. you know, like yeah. in a double gated community. But in Ghana, it's like, that, that's a lot of money to yeah. me. But it, it's what's People happening. People are buying. They're buying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, am I in the wrong industry? What am I, <laughs> what am I doing? They, they have access to funds. And then you wouldn't, you'd be surprised. You find out what some of these people do and it'd be like, I'm in juice or I'm in like, uh, wow. you know, stuff. You're like, wow, that, that's really doing well. Then. <laughs> I guess, that's a good industry. Do I need to look into juice? Or, wow. <laughs> and they're able to pay for They're the able to pay. They're able to pay. They're on time with payment schedules. If it's still in the pre-construction phase, I'm just like, people are making money. Wow. Wow. So. And then what age groups are you seeing? Are you seeing a lot of young people buying properties or is it the older um, people that you're seeing? It's more of a middle aged in like mid to late 40s okay. um, is our sweet spot right now. Okay. Um, the younger, I wouldn't even say that young, like I, I want to say like 30s, mid 30s okay. to or late 20s to mid 30s okay i think they would all love to have something um we're actually now looking into a, a fractional ownership um type of division or sector okay. where they can have access but maybe on a fractional basis okay. you know a lot of the younger crowd they come maybe for christmas or yeah. easter so maybe they may want access to just the time that they they need in ghana and maybe they don't need a, a townhouse for all 365 days out of the year but just for the time that they want to be here okay so um, we're looking at that we're looking into a way to make it more affordable for them okay. and a way to kind of have um you know, everybody wants a little piece of Africa. It doesn't have to be full, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Maybe it's just a little piece for yeah. when they want to come and have fun, you know, or with family or something like that. So that's definitely something we've been looking into because there's a huge market for that. If Absolutely. they really can understand the concept. I mean, in New York, our little department was responsible for bringing in over $200 million each year. Wow. And each year we made it. Or for people just buying fractions of, of properties. properties. Okay. They just wanted the time that they needed. They didn't need a $2 million apartment. I'm not going to be here, you know. But maybe someone that is staying at a Waldorf Astoria, you know, high-end hotel or something like that, where it's maybe $800 a night. They come every, you know, for Christmas, two weeks out. That's $15,000 right true. there. So they figure, why not put the money into something where you can always use it, wow. you know? So it's a, it's a different way to look at it. It's but it, there's definitely a market for it. And there's a market for the clientele that wants the full house, uh, you know, to own. They want to leave it down for their family and just, 
But I think gone are the days where our, our parents were building these eight bedroom homes and just, you know, I think those. And they <laughs> don't live in it. They don't live in <laughs> it. They're it's back in the, in the oh UK or gosh. US. And, yeah. then, and then the kids don't even want it because yeah. by that time it's so outdated. They're like, what are we going to do with this big old it's house? True. So they're like, sell it. Let's get the money yeah. or something, you know. It's true. So it's, uh, it's a different times we're in now. It's true. Yeah. So you've been in the real estate in the U.S., come back to Ghana. If you had to change anything, the process of buying properties, what is it that you've learned that you would change if you were in that position? And it's difficult to say this. I, I wish there was a way where you could get access to uh, mortgages or loans at a much mm -hmm. lower interest rate. You know, the banks here, and it's not to the, any fault of their own, it's just a different system here, but um, it's a very high interest rate, you know, and it's especially if you're coming from the U.S., you have access to mortgages at 2 and 3%, so maybe 4% to come here and see, 30. like, 15, 22% mm -hmm. yeah. interest. You're like... Even 30. 30? Yeah. Yeah. You're like, it just doesn't make sense. So then you look for the other alternative, which is just cash up front, you know, which makes it very difficult because you're either tapping into your 401k, tapping into stocks or something, it's, and then they penalize you so heavily on that in the U.S., so it's, it makes it difficult. But I wish I, wish I would have took my time mm -hmm. and really searched for where I wanted to be in Ghana and maybe just started small, you know, and maybe, like, work my way around it, just have a foothold and, and not just jump into the building process because I had no idea what I was mm. doing. At the How much money do you think you lost during that process, the two processes, mm. realistically? It's a six figures. Wow. Six figures, definitely. Um, I'm, I, when I think about it, I just don't want to think about it. But what? it's definitely uh, probably over $100,000 wow. to start if I've done the calculations right, yeah. And, and, and the property still does not belong to you? You're still in court? We are still in court, dealing with stuff, dealing with issues. And I, you know, you'll talk to 10 people in Ghana, and maybe of eight of them are in court, <laughs> dealing with the same thing. <laughs> so I, I learned very quickly, it's, it's almost like the norm here, which is really unfortunate yeah. because it should not be like that. Because um, in America, there is a system in place that does protect you from those things. But in Ghana, it just, it's, it's delayed, it's drawn out, it takes a long time, mm -hmm. there, are, there are different things in place. Um, but it was a very expensive lesson to yeah. learn. And I wouldn't, um, I hope nobody else has to go through that. Mm -hmm. Even though a lot of people are still going through that. Yeah. You know, you hear cases that have just been won after 20 years and you're like, <laughs> but that's what made forced me to start the company because I was like, if I sit at home and think about everything I've lost, I'm gonna go crazy. Yeah. So let me just push forward, use the last little bit of money I got left, and start something right. and keep my mind off of it, so I don't lose my mind. You know, <laughs> it's like, so it was it was a process. Wow. Um, and not a lot of people are in that type of situation where they have access to that type of liquid cash to lose. Yeah. But Ghana definitely teaches you. Um, it teaches you. Let's just leave it there. You're, it will open your eyes. When you submit it, it will open your eyes definitely wide your eyes. and you will be shocked at, at um, the growing pains and how you have to grow very quickly and become wiser, smarter, mm. faster, quicker on your feet. Just understand the system because sure. it's a completely different system it here. Sure you know, you have to really be ready for it <laughs> so do you see jennifer staying here for the long run are you here for the long run are you gonna have a family here are you gonna get married here what are you gonna do i would love to you know i would love to get married here i would love to have a family you know i do like the family aspect of ghana you know new york is great but it could be a very lonely place yeah. you could live right next door to someone and never you know they'll never check on you or anything like that but Ghana is more of a family it's a community people you know how you're doing what's going on people do tend to help you a little bit more they they um it's just a kindness here that maybe you just may not find in a place like New York yeah um so I do like some of the values I would definitely want to instill that you know the respect and you know courtesy for for um your parents and you know older people that I feel like it's being lost in America right now uh, so I do like uh, the cultural benefits right. that you have here. Right. Um, it's just learning the system. Once you learn the system and you understand the system, 
I think the biggest thing for me was unlearning a lot of the things I had learned in America and okay. relearning how things are done here. Because once you understand that this is not that, <laughs> you know, it's two different things and don't try to compare it. Well, this was better in the U.S. It's not the same. It's different. different. So forget all of that. This is how things are done here and this is how things are done there. Mm. So okay. get with the program. Cause it <laughs> so what about social, social Ghana? Um, how yeah. has that been? That has been interesting as well. <laughs> Ghana, I would say Ghana, Ghanaians love their nightlife. They like to party. They like to enjoy themselves, have a good time. Um, you know, I think I've been so busy working. I haven't had the time to really go out and make, you know, good girlfriends or like okay. other people that are also, you know, other entrepreneurs that are right. doing stuff. So it's a, it's like a different, um, dynamic here because you have the group of people that's like married with kids and they're worried about kids and you've got the other people that are either maybe too young they you know so it's, it's just like the other entrepreneurs they're so busy you know you have to kind of be at your business yeah, 24, 24 7 if you want it to be successful so you know i think i gotta start going out more and um <laughs> meeting some people because i still have my friends back in new york and okay. you know they'll come visit every once in a while but um I think my focus has just been on, on the business, on the business, okay. you know, getting things off the ground. And uh, so you haven't have any you haven't had any relationships here. Oh, gosh. Relationships here in Ghana. I, I would not advise. <laughs> <laughs> I would not advise. No, that's a lie. Let me stop. Um, there are some good people here. There are some good people here. But oh, um you have to be careful. You have to be careful. And I think that's everywhere, you know, but here, especially because Ghana, let me not say Ghana, Accra is very um, small, I guess, or nitpick tightly, uh, you know, it's like, it's like a small community. Everybody kind of knows everybody. Everybody's like, um, again, that credit base, it's based on relationships. So everybody has a lot of relationships with different people. You know, this person is in mining, this person is in, you know, um, construction, this person does sugar, you know, so it's like everybody kind of knows everybody. So you don't want to just, you know, because you never know when you'll need that relationship again, you know, when that person will come back in your life through another way. You never know. One thing Ghana has taught me is you really never know who can help you down sure. the line. So um be very mindful of that and um be very uh i guess proceed with discernment and wisdom when interacting with um different people but the relationship scene here i don't know it's, it's i thought new york was bad ghana is like oh my god <laughs> it's another level i know we got to to that <laughs> Oh, goodness. It's not that bad. I'm just joking. I have friends that are getting married and they found their, their person. So you'll find your person. Yeah, I think it's coming. I honestly think it's right around the corner. Yeah. And if they're watching, this is for you. To, <laughs> to <laughs> make sure you, you um, get a move on that. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what did your parents say? Like, you move into God. Were they like, are you crazy? They, they thought I was crazy. <laughs> My mother was having dreams. <laughs> no, don't do Because they still have Ghana from decades yeah. ago. You know, they haven't been back to Ghana since they left. Okay. So they, the Ghana there, they're like, you want to go back where? Like, what is wrong with you? But it felt like something was calling me wow. to Ghana. It was like, and I, it's just so happened with this year of return. There's a lot of people. I bump into Americans here all the time. That's true. They all came that year, 2019. I'm, they don't speak the language. They don't have any background in Ghana. No family members yep. here. And, and they they're still like, came. they still came. And they're like, something told me to come. And I feel like there was a wave of us that just came. And we're like, we don't even know what we're doing here. We just... God was calling us. We're here. <laughs> We're figuring it out. So um, they thought I was crazy. Yeah. What do you think has really kept you in Ghana? God. God, God, God has sustained me in ways I could never imagine. He has sent help, destiny helpers, um, at times where I didn't know what was going to happen. 
Definitely my faith has been built in Ghana. I had little weak faith before, but in Ghana, God has sustained me. And I, I really have to give all things and glory to him because without him, I don't know what would have happened. Mm. But help came from places. I j it was just amazing. You meet the right people, the right connections. And when you look back and you see the way the dots connected, you realize it had to be God. Absolutely. It had to be God. Do you think that God is here more than he is in, in the U.S.? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Even when you're driving on the roads and you're like, I remember when I first got here and I was driving, I was like, what are the rules? And you're like, oh, there's like no rules. You just are going with God. You are on the road with God. God is, God is in Ghana. And there's actually a saying when I first got here, um, somebody mentioned to me that it was something that was going around during your return that if you were a true child of God, you would find your way back to Ghana at some point in your life. Oh. And I, I was like, really? Because there were people here that, and I think it was someone, it was, um, was she from Jamaica or somewhere? She was telling me, she was like, you will find your way back to Ghana at some point in life. Because they were talking about how Ghana was like the center of the world. Yep. The longitude, latitude lands yep. right on Ghana, no, zero, is, zero. Yep. There's like a magnetic pull that draws people here because it's the center of the world. And when you get here, you feel it. I almost felt like I was an Avatar movie. You know, as soon as the plane landed, I just felt like I am home. Mm. It's like a peace that just comes over you. Before you go into the Wahala, mm. it is like calming. You just know that there's something that pulls you it's here. True. So I feel like it's the force of God that is really covering all of us. And without God, none of this would be possible. I don't want to take any credit for it because it was God. Absolutely. It was all God. It's all God. All God, <laughs> always, in all ways. That's Absolutely. That was God. And then COVID happened, you know? So it was like, you are here by force. Yeah. You know, the borders were closed. Close, yeah. So even if you wanted to leave, you couldn't leave. So I was like, you can't go anywhere. Everything is locked down. If you don't push forward and make a way, you're just going to be stuck. That's true. So figure it out and un stuck yourself yeah. you know start to think of something what what are you good at what did you do well you know real estate so you know what you've been through build two houses you know just yeah go with what you know take and more tools will be added along the way Absolutely. but start with what you already know and i was like all right that's what i'm gonna do that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> we're gonna figure this out but it, it's it's going but is your is your mom okay now like are she's they... actually coming to visit oh, it's no. like after all this come back home come She's like, oh, okay, I see the pictures. Ghana doesn't look, I can't believe this is Ghana. Wow, okay, so me and your sister will come visit oh, you. Oh, that's nice. So I'm, I'm excited now. I want to show them the new and improved Ghana. Oh, that's nice. I know nice. she's going to be in shock. Like, because again, they, and maybe, you know, for our, our generation of uh, parents, you know, maybe there was a lot of trauma that was during that time it's a whole different time it's now true. you know it's true. even when i came for that little short trip in 2014 just coming back in 2019 so many things have changed yeah. you can imagine 30 plus years ago the ghana Absolutely. they remember is not the same ghana Absolutely. so i'm excited for them to awesome. come in and, and see and i could show them around because <laughs> yeah, that was the whole purpose i wanted to build a house here for the family oh. i knew that my parents were about to retire soon and I was like, wouldn't it be nice if we just had a place back home? Yeah. I didn't know it was going to come with all these challenges, but, um, you know, you learn. You yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's all a learning curve. And the more of us that come and do learn and yeah. learn the system, because there is a system here. Ghana Definitely. has its own system. Definitely. Don't get that twisted. Definitely. But it's just about learning the system and how to maneuver through exactly. that system. I'm glad that you've been able to stay here for the last three years mm. but if you had to unwind and take it back to 2019 mm. before you came would you still have come and would you have gone through the same process that is such a good question and I think about this question often you know if I could change would I have still done the same thing um it was it has been very difficult for me this maybe was the hardest experience I have ever experienced in my life. Wow. You know, when they say you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. No, if you can make it in Ghana here, you can make it anywhere because Ghana made New York seem like child's play. Wow. Like Ghana was, 
I thought New York was tough. New York was tough, man. I remember when I first got to New York, someone broke into my car, stole all my stuff. It was just, it was just like, welcome to New York. But Ghana's initiation, <laughs> I call it the initiation phase. Ghana will initiate you. It will force you to grow. It will force you to open your eyes. But I feel like, like a seed that's been planted in a dark place, you know, mm. it, it, your roots grow. Your roots grow so deep. And I don't know if that seed is watered with all the tears you're gonna cry, cause you're gonna cry a lot, but it, it grows so deep to the point where your foundation is so strong, nothing can shake your wow. tree. There's nothing that I'm afraid of right now. Like I'm like, I done been, I'm not scared of court. I'm not scared of no lawyers. I'm not scared of police. I'm not scared, I'm not, I'm not scared. I am like bulletproof. Wow. Cause Ghana will force you to be strong. Get your armor on. Like you got to put your big girl panties on and and be ready to fight. Not fight, but just Men mentally. Mentally. Be mentally, it's not really. Um, you know, I was away from my family. I was here by myself. I didn't know anybody. And then I'm, I'm building. But I, in America, you don't build a house. You buy a house. It's already built. You know, it's like it was a lot. It was very difficult. It was oh. very difficult. So I don't know. Um, if I made the right choice, but I also know experience is the best teacher. And I don't know how else I would have got this teaching right. <laughs> without this experience. Right. Because someone could have told me, don't come. You're going to go through X, Y, and Z. And I probably wouldn't have believed them. That's true. Until I came for myself and you're like, wow, okay, this is serious. Yeah. So maybe, you know, it was all worth it because I learned so much. Um, but with what I know now, I would have stayed in my beautiful apartment, probably <laughs> chilling and just, you know, had a good life, but yeah. nobody was expecting COVID yeah. and COVID hit New York so hard. Yeah. And it was like, right when I left, everything, everything happened yeah. in New York and I had a lot of friends that got really sick that I would have probably been around. Sure. So who knows what God was protecting me from? Cause sure. it was something was like, you need to go, you need to go right now. Right. And then as soon as I left, the whole world is under attack. So, and this was like the safest place it's to be. True. Absolutely. It was like COVID didn't even exist <laughs> here. It was, we were outside. I'm like, no mask. Everybody's, and we didn't get sick. It's so I'm true. like, maybe there was a divine plan. It's Nobody true. could have foreseen that happening. Maybe if I didn't listen and go, I would have been there. You know, it was a beautiful building, but there's so many people in the building. Everybody would have been on elevator. You know, it's like, you just, you never know. It's true. So, um, but have you made money in Ghana? Have you made money in Ghana that maybe you wouldn't have made in New York? Definitely not as much yet. Okay. Mind you, I worked in finance. So, you know, that the money you make in that world is, there's doctors and lawyers that don't even make that kind of money we were making. And um, the guys that I worked with, they, they know we were just in a league of our own. Wow. You feel untouchable. You can walk into any store, buy any handbag you want. Wow. And I was so young and you're like, oh, I'll pay my rent the whole year up front. You're like, cause, and I had money to come build a house. Like I thought, when am I ever going to get access to this type of money again? Let me just do it now while I have it. But I mean, and a lot of our clients were doctors and lawyers and they weren't making the same money we we're making. We're like, this is amazing. So I think it takes time to get there. But as far as the money I was making in New York, I haven't made quite yet that type of money here. Okay. It's still been, you make money. Don't get me wrong, you'll make money. But it's different. It different. It's different. Yeah, maybe if once we can get this development going, okay. which is in the works right now, I think that's where the real money is in Ghana, okay. the developments. You know, if you're doing like one off properties, it's a little bit harder. But once you move into development, I think you can surpass. So, you know surpass what you're making in america because don't forget in america they are taxing you sure i was getting taxed i think at like 42 percent or something ridiculous because i was single i didn't own uh, my apartment so you don't own real estate you don't have children so you don't have any dependents and they were they tax you at the highest wow. amount so you could get a check for a hundred thousand dollars forty thousand dollars is going gone. to taxes you know so the system here is a little different. You get to keep a little bit more of your own money. Um, but I think once you hit it in Ghana, you can make it way mm. more than what you can do in the U.S., Absolutely. I think. Because it's, you're more in control of your own, your own money. 
And it's also in America, it's how are you making your money? Are you working for a W-2? Is it under 1099? Are you self-employed? You know, it's different to jump into being self-employed in Ghana. You know, maybe if I had went through the process of working for, you know, in a bank or something for a company, and then you kind of go along the way, but to just jump into the self-employed aspect in Ghana is also difficult because now you're new. Yeah. You have to build up your clientele base. You have to build up those relationships. You know, you kind of have to build yourself from the ground up. So mm -hmm. it's been a slow start. But um, I think when it hits, it hits big, you know, because the, the price point you're dealing yeah. with is big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So going back to your experience that you faced, you know, coming to Ghana and building, etc. Why should or, you know, what would you tell somebody that's come into Ghana that's wanting to to go into real estate or buy a property? Mm -hmm. Why should they come to you for that help? Oh, again, I've been through the experience. You don't have to go through what I went through. You know, it's really to save people from having to lose a lot of money and a lot of wasted time that you sometimes cannot get back. Um, you know, and I, I just feel like maybe they would feel more comfortable dealing with someone maybe that lived in the U.S., you know the system there, you know what challenges they are going to be facing there, getting access to mortgages maybe in the U.S. to try to, you know, pay for things here. Um, just different things. I just feel like, I, listen, I've done it already. I've been there, so you don't have to go there, you know. Um, and if it works, if, if our uh, personalities work together with each other, you know, I always like to, for people to feel like they can trust you, you know, and I think people pick up on that very quickly, you know, and people are able to spend money with people they trust, you know. That, that was one of the biggest things I learned working in New York. People spend money with people they trust. Mm -hmm. You know, a sale is really just a transference of belief. If I believe in something, I can get someone else to believe in it. Right there, you got a sale. You know, so if you're selling a product that you actually believe in, people can feel that and they can trust in that. And they're like, okay, I feel like my money is being spent with something, you know, that's worthwhile. It's not just an emotional sale, but it's also backed by logic. You know, does this make sense? And sometimes it's not the right product for the client you know we go through all avenues does this make sense is this what you're looking for you know is this exactly what you need maybe you should wait you know let's see how things are set up how are what is the payment structure set up are you going to be able to do this you may need to just wait for a second or you may need to move to a let's start off with the one bedroom let's start right. off with something that's a little bit more feasible if your end goal is just for rentals you know we go through different avenues of what rents out at different rates how often do one bedrooms get you know people that are buying for investments they right. have different questions what areas can i get the biggest return on my investment if you're dealing with an investor so we ask questions we really want to make sure we are the right fit for you just yeah. as you're looking for the right fit for um yourself so it, it depends and it may not be the right fit you know yeah. sometimes clients come to me and they they got a fifty thousand dollar budget and i'm like we can do some things <laughs> but uh, it may not be where you want it to be but we can start small yeah you know we can work our way and see what makes sense and if it doesn't make sense then um, i wish you the best but i will i always tell clients don't do x y and z there are some red flags that you should stay away from so if anything they've learned Something, some new information yeah. that they can help for when they are ready Absolutely. to you know make the jump Absolutely. and uh fantastic yeah well we are going to put up your website details and your you know your contact details so people can contact you if they need assistance when it comes to real estate but my last question would be your advice to those people who are back home, are other back home, so in the mm -hmm. UK, US, Europe, wherever they are, yeah. what ad advice would you give them before moving to Ghana? Um, I would definitely say come to Ghana first. Come, see it, feel it, touch it, experience it for yourself. Because I know it was a hype at one point, everybody wants to come back to Ghana, but that may not be the best fit for somebody during a certain time in their life. You know, you may want to come and experience it, see if it makes sense for you. Stay maybe a month or two, mm -hmm. kind of get a feel of the system, see if you can, if you even like it. You know, I almost made the mistake of moving to Texas one time. And I went, I, I had the best piece of advice from a, a mentor friend of mine. And I called her and I was like, I think I'm moving to Texas, you know, and she goes, Jennifer, I know you, and you're not going to like the down south. Go for two weeks. Go for two weeks, and if you like it, then you should go. And so I went down there for two weeks and hated it. 
it was, I was like, oh my God, what, I don't know what I would do, you know? Mm -hmm. But I will say people coming from the diaspora, two week trip in Ghana is very different than when you actually live here. <laughs> if you come for two weeks, you'll have the time of your life, you'll have a ball, and you're like, I'm ready to move, pack my bags and come. No, do not do that. Come, stay for a longer period of time, feel Six it out. Six months. Six months <laughs> is really the mark. Like, cause that's when everything starts happening. Yep. Six months is come if you can do that i know people still work in the states and you may not be able to take a six month vacation but come for at least a, a six month period where you can get the feel of how it would be to live here because when you come for two weeks and it's parties and everything is a high life and you're having a great time you'll be ready to go back home and pack your bags and then you come here and it get get knocked up in your face and Ghana it's like oh this is different yep. so um definitely uh come see it for yourself um see if it makes sense for you um but I, I would tell them to wait go slow be patient there's no rush you know um it's not like new york where everything if you don't buy it right now you know it, 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 somebody will buy it before the day's yeah. over you know but they've built up credibility with companies already so it's a different dynamic but come see how you feel in ghana thank you jennifer thank you too <laughs> so you've heard from jennifer she says come first come first Feel it, touch it, be here for at least six months, if not four, the lowest, I would say, four, the lowest, but definitely come and stay for six months because that's when you will see the real Ghana, see the real realities. Because when you come for that two, three weeks, it's, it's not Ghana, that, as you see, especially when you come around Christmas, okay? There's a lot of parties, things are good, um, but the reality kicks in when you stay here for longer but she would encourage you to come so do come and you know she has a set she set up a business through her challenges that she's had here <laughs> in Ghana so you never know you may come find a challenge and solve that problem as well and that's why I encourage everybody from the diaspora to come back and experience Ghana and see the opportunities that is here thank you so much for watching I'll see you same time next week bye-bye